Steve here from Chester Bow Basin, ChesterBowBasin.com. Um, one of our other videos, we talked about inboard running gear. Um, we mentioned cutlass bearings. So right now we've got this boat, the cutlass bearings about to come out. So we're gonna finish getting this out with you right now. And then we're gonna show you the difference between the one that was in here and the new one. And that'll kind of give you an idea of why you should do these uh, and why they need to be changed. Um, so if you follow me under here, you can see a couple different things we got going on. We've got our one ton hydraulic jack. It moves these cylinders here. Um, this is called the Durant press. It's got a couple different sizes, you know, depending on the shaft, cutlass bearing. Uh, basically you use this to press the cutlass bearing through this ring. Um, so you can see here, when I start jacking this, if you look in here, you can see the cutlass bearing moving. Uh, another really important thing are these set screws. You always want to make sure that these are loose. Um, otherwise, you're going to have a real hard time getting this bearing out. But you can see we should be just about out here. There she there goes. She goes. Uh, we'll relieve pressure, we'll push these in. All right, so, show you the difference between an old bearing and a new bearing. So, you can see here, here's the old bearing. You've got all this dry rot, and obviously you can't see this, but the rubber is extremely hard, and that will actually wear your shaft down. Um, so that's why it's important to maintain these. Um, again, you know, water conditions, but you're probably every three to five years, uh, these need to get pressed out. And the other reason you wanna do them more often than not is because if they get stuck in there, and this system can't get it out, we have to pull your shaft and cut these out. And it takes a significant amount of more time. Um, so it's a lot better to do these more often than not. Um, in the long term, it actually saves you money by doing these more often because this, um, this one came out real easy. Um, you know, sometimes we've had them fight us where we're heating the strut for, you know, 20 minutes, tapping it with, you know, dead blows, hitting this thing with a hammer to try to get that initial, initial pop of the bearing. So if you just take a look, again, this is the old one. This is what the new one should look like. Now, this is not the right bearing for this boat. We're actually waiting for them to come in later. Um, but you can see the massive difference. This rubber is is nice and pliable it's not hard there's no dry rot going on um and the other important thing is is these channels in these bearings allow water as you run the boat to get in between the rubber and the shaft to act as uh, a natural lubricant um so again you avoid this bearing wearing down your shaft and this is why you do not want them to get to this condition um, I can tell you these probably should have been done three or four years ago. Um, but again, they came out like butter, so uh, this customer got lucky. Um, and uh, keep watching, and we'll get a nice video of this uh, going back in. Uh, we'll see you later. All right, you just watched in the first part of this video. We pressed it out, and uh, we did mention that we had uh, we showed you a comparison in bearings, and we said that it wasn't the correct bearing for this boat. Uh, the correct bearings for this boat were special order. So we officially have the correct bearing for this boat. And uh, we just want to show you the real, you know, major difference. Um, you know, you can see, obviously there's a lot more rubber in this, but I mean, you can just see the huge difference between the dry rot. I mean, the rubber is almost breaking out of this bearing. You know, it's all cracked and everything. So, um, and we talked about uh, these things fighting us. Uh, the first one on the port side came out real easy on this particular boat. The starboard, not so much. Um, we actually had to get the shrink wrap torch to heat this. 
um, and we swapped out the press to a bigger press to get this side out. And uh, after seeing how that went, we're actually gonna leave this hooked up to the Durant because we don't really need it for anything. It was just kind of a spare one that we had kicking around. But we're gonna get this set up now and just kind of show you. Uh, basically, we just flip everything backwards, use a little bit of a smaller ring to press this in. You know, obviously this doesn't fit through this, so it's gonna pull on this bearing and just pull it right in. Um, instead of using this to press it out, we're going to use this to press against the strut and pull the bearing into place. Um, yeah, so I guess put that thing down. All right, so we got the Durant pressed set up here. Um, make sure the angle's good here. I think that's pretty, pretty good. Yep, all right. So, like we said, you just kind of flip everything backwards. We got the red thing backwards using a little bit of a smaller ring. And yeah, I mean, it's just going to go in nice and easy. Pulls it right in. Goes nice and easy. So if you look, we're maxed out. You get the nice little cylinders here. Usually these don't help us too often except for going in, but pulls it right in. We're about halfway in there. So actually on this next move, um, we probably won't get the advantage of these little cylinders. So from here on out, we're only gonna get this, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it, inch and a half, two inches right here of movement. But that's basically it. So um, going in is usually pretty easy. It's uh, the coming out process that uh, is usually difficult. Um, again, that's why we tell you to do them more often than not. Uh, you know, three to five years, six is really the most you ever really want to go. Um, but usually what we're looking for is dry rot like that. You start to see dry rot, it is time to replace your bearing. Thanks for watching.